today. I'm in Howden, in the Minster Church of Howden. And I'd like to read some of the earliest references to Howden I can find from a charter of King Edgar in the year 959. The charter's in Latin, which nobody, nobody understands, so I'm going to read in English. And the boundaries it talks about are in Old English, so of course I'll read those in Old English. In the uncertain changes of active life, its end, as witnessed by the declaration of sacred authority, is discerned to be fast hastening. For as the veritable decree announces, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, etc. For all estates of the present life are forsaken in the uncertain destinies of our successors, and all the glory of the world, when the term of death comes on, falls away in turn to nothing. Therefore, seeing that the small possessions of these fleeting things are ever relapsing, we should much rather endeavour, under the protection of the Most High, to acquire eternal things by gaining the rewards of the celestial country. Wherefore I, Edgar, governor and ruler of the whole province of Mercia, and also of other races dwelling around, moved favourably by devotion, have granted in perpetual inheritance to a certain matron, very faithful to me, who is named by her acquaintance in distinction queen, a certain piece of land. By estimation, it may be severed in two parts, which in common speech are called by the inhabitants of this province, Hefutene and Eldidrehe, that she may, according to her wish, happily enjoy the same with all belongings to it, fields, meadows, pastures and woods, and after the term of her life may leave it free to whomsoever allotted she shall will. Moreover, let the aforesaid land which I, with the consent of my witham, have granted to the aforesaid matron, be free from every burden of land service, these three excepted, viz. military service, the repair of bridges, and fortresses. But if anyone, impelled by a diabolic spirit, shall presumptuously attempt to violate or change this grant, unless, as a guilty one before his death, he shall repent, giving due satisfaction, may he, cast with Judas the betrayer of Christ into the everlasting fires of the pit, be punished in eternal woe. This sind langimare to hear puttenne, of us and upon will badis fleote, of will badis fleote on dick and lang dickes on dear wartan, on dear wartan, on ye richte of carholm, of carholme and lang dickes held on boot and wood da fulnea, and lang fulnea on eld and dear wartan, and lang elde dear wentan. On eft on usan. Lasi on da hara to hefuddeni mit sakien mit sokni. Knullingatum, fjordkul, karfel, thor, hude, estringatum, bellavi, kelpene. This sind on langimare at eldrehe, of ur on hrot lafis holm. Of Rodlaf is home to see Marion Sigiris Ak, of Sigiris Ak on Usan, and Lang Usan eft up on Ur. You may be wondering who the Queen was that was mentioned in the charter. It seems likely she's Alfwen, the wife of Ethels, Athelstan, the half king as he was called a once actual ruler of East Anglia and later Elderman. This Athelstan was grandson of a much more famous Athelstan, the Viking Guthrum, 
who signed a treaty of wedlock with King Alfred and on being immediately baptised was renamed Athelstan. 